Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, the CEO of Audio Advice. Today, I have an unbelievable story to walk you through. I've become incredible friends with Kamal, who we've been building this theater with for the past year. Many of you know I shoot theaters that we do all across the country, but this theater has been unlike anything else we've done. There's a story behind this that you brought to us about a year ago, and you told us this vision of what you wanted to build, and we began to work together. And today is the culmination of this unbelievable experience that started when you were young in India into building this. So come on, why don't you just tell us a little bit about the dream for this theater and what led you here? Absolutely. First off, I wanna thank you, Scott, and Audio Advice. You guys literally made my dreams come true with this theater. And for everyone at home, uh, movies have always meant more to me than just disposable entertainment. My father used to distribute Bollywood movies all over India. That's the second biggest movie industry in the world. And then when my dad came to the United States back in the late 70s, early 80s, he used to distribute Hollywood movies. Uh, to India. Particularly, there was a studio called Canon Films, which people my age would probably know. It was the Chuck Norris films, Van Damme, all of your action stuff. So I remember growing up, I used to see all these screener tapes, these big oversized VHS covers that would come. And my dad and I would sit down, we would watch some movies. So it was a really neat experience as I kind of grew up watching all that and how the film machinery worked. And so when I thought about what I wanted to do with this theater, Killer audio, killer video, aesthetics, all of that was really important to me. But I wanted my theater to tell a story. And I wanted it to say what Hollywood and movies mean to me. Yeah, and that really came out, you know, when we first did the interview with you and our team was working with you. You told this story that I want this oasis, but I also have become a pretty serious collector even from the entryway of this theater, where we've got the cinema sign above it. But as you come in, these amazing statues that are displayed here, just tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe a few of these. And obviously this is an entryway unlike almost anyone would have in a theater. I'll tell you to start off, this collection took me about six years to amass. And I had to look at distributors that were all over the world, uh, China, Europe, South America, the United States. I had a vision and I dis designed this custom display cabinet to fit individual statues rather than just making a pervasive space where then I have to kind of retrofit the statues after the fact. So this is probably my single favorite statue in the collection. This is a queen studio, one-to-one -one scale, meaning it's a life-size, Arnold Schwarzenegger bus. So this was an addition of just 99 units across the world. So it's been sold out for about four years now. And the reason I like this is because this is probably the single best Schwarzenegger likeness that exists. You've got medical grade silicone. You've got an ocular prosthetic eye. So what people might have if they have eye surgery. And then you've got real rooted human hair that was individually punched strand by strand. So when I look at this, it takes me back to when I was nine years old in the theater. Yeah. Every time I walk by it, it just gives me the feels. It's incredible. And you know, obviously we've got the depth in here for particularly for the viewers. When we were designing this, mm -hmm. you know, this is a really, really deep set of cabinets. And mm -hmm. the lighting became a huge part of this, right? So we have a special kind of LED lighting we're using mm -hmm. with 3000 Kelvin and really high CRI, which is a color rendering index, because the colors in these are so amazing. And then we use diffusers to throw the light throughout all these statues. And when you walk into this room, it just grabs you in a way that's incredible. So show, show us another one. Absolutely. So the next one, we're gonna go up here. So this is the Cinema Kent Predator. So the reason that this statue is so special is a lot of people at home may or may not know, but there was a guy named Stan Winston who did all the special effects for some of the biggest movies we know. And then his partner, Steve Wang, actually designed the Predator as we know and love today. So this statue came from the studio of Steve Wang. So this is the most movie accurate representation of the Predator that exists. 
This statue weighs over 80 pounds, real metal, real fabric, um, and it's been sold out now for over 10 years. Now, I just finished watching Sly on Netflix, which I think maybe you did as I did well. Too. Yeah. And I see over here, you know, the script from Rocky III. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I have had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Stallone. Uh, he's just a wonderful person. His story is incredible. So this is a Rocky III production new script. So what that means is someone during the making of the movie actually used the script to film the movie. So there's annotations, there's all kinds of things in there, but what makes this even cooler is Mr. Stallone actually signed this. Well, obviously you have an unbelievable collection here. What I'd like to do for a minute sure. to just take the viewers through the journey that we had in building this is I'm gonna go back and show everyone just a little clip of what this room looked like when it was empty and there was nothing but studs in this room. Okay. And then you and I are gonna come back here and walk through and show everyone what does it look like finished now and talk a little bit about this room. Absolutely. All right, so this is gonna be totally cool. You're seeing everything with nothing but studs here before the pre-wire. You'll see right here, here's where all the cool memorabilia is gonna go as you enter the theater room. And you'll see the rack room is here and we've actually designed it where we have the rack available for the whole smart home plus the theater in one rack. You'll see the cam behind it for all the security and structured wire. And I want you to look right here. What we've got is four 20 amp circuits that'll come into this room to power everything in the rack, all the smart home, all the theater together. And I'll come back and show you, I want you to see that we've actually brought in the electrical that goes to the projector and to the subwoofers back to here because we don't want any buzz in the system. And so if you really want to get it right, you want to bring everything back to one electrical system, which is all going to happen here. Now let's take a look at where the speakers are going to go. You see what we've done. We've actually come in and we've marked with green for our team to come through and actually pre-wire this. And so the left speaker will go here. You'll see the marking for the subwoofer there. And then you'll see marking for the center speaker here. You'll see the green mark for the subwoofer here and then also for the right speaker and these will be actually in wall speakers and then we'll have the screen in front of it acoustically transparent to come out one thing i want to call out is if you watch the actual electrical wiring here for these subwoofer outlets here and it comes and this one ties into this one and then goes instead of being on the regular electrical outlets in the room goes home run all the way back to the same system that's powering all the amplifiers and everything else that way you get no buzz or hum or anything in the system so now let's look, you'll see we've also marked with the green the bay where we've got the uh, left side speaker. Um, we've also got the uh, right side over here. We've got our right rear here. And then you'll see the left rear. And we've actually marked, this is a cool way to do it, we mark on the floor where the Atmos is going to go. So you can see Atmos speaker there, Atmos speaker on the floor here. And then you'll look in the front and see Atmos here and here. So this is going to be a really cool, great opportunity to see everything happening from the beginning. So now we're in the theater. You know, one of the things I wanted to talk to everyone about is give them a sense of what is the experience coming into this theater. And obviously, we've now shown everyone a little bit about the display case with all these statues. But a few things about this display case that are quite interesting. The depth of this is how deep here? 36 inches. Yeah, which is incredibly deep. And it's really tough to light something up 36 inches deep. And for those of you, if you're trying to do something like this display case, you need really, really good LEDs in here. And so you'll see as all this is lit up, every one of these has 3000 Kelvin LEDs. We're using a 45 degree diffuser to spread the light out all throughout so that we can capture everything. And we're using high CRI lighting, meaning high color rendering index. So it's pulling out every single color of all these statues. And then in particular here with the Terminator, We've got a DMF light, and I'm going to talk about those as we go through. But as you walk in, everything happens with these statues. And then we shift, and you had this vision that as you look down the hallway, you'd see this incredible poster. Why don't you take us over and show us what everyone's looking at as they walk in? Absolutely. Let's do that. So, Scott, uh, when I mentioned earlier that my dad used to distribute movies back to India, so a couple of the movies he distributed were old Bruce Lee films. And so I always grew up with an appreciation for the man the bright light that burned out a little too quickly, unfortunately. So I wanted Bruce Lee, and I wanted that to be the first shot as someone walked in. So this is an original French grand poster 
from 1967. Fully restored. As you can tell by the size, it's 47 by 63 inches, so it's massive. And unfortunately, there was no possibility of having Bruce sign this. The next best thing was Chuck Norris. So he signed this in front of me, and when he looked at it, the first thing he said is, oh, it's my friend Bruce. And that kind of tugged my heartstrings for a second, but he wrote all the best, a friend, Chuck Norris. And so this is one of those things that just also takes me back to a time in my life uh, that I cherish. One of the things that we did, and you know, I've made a whole video on how do you light a theater correctly, but you and I spent a lot of time talking about, okay, we know what we're gonna do with the LED lights in terms of the display case. These DMF lights are actually aimable lights and they're very specific lights that we've aimed correctly to get all the light in the right places and the shadows in the right places. And those match DMF lights that run on the perimeter of this room. And I think uh, if you're designing your own theater, a lot of people that are getting into the theater space mm -hmm. and stars around the country will watch my videos to see what they do. One of the things you and I talked about is how do you take a room like this that's just very much a museum for you right. and enable it to be bright like we're sitting with it right now. But when you sit down to watch, how do we enable it to dim the lights so that you can have that experience you want without any light on the screen? And we'll show some examples of how you do that, but what it means is you can't just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a few lights. Absolutely right. These are high performance lights that have the ability to dim down to 1% so we can control whether it's these LED lights in the walls or the DMF above and everything in the display cases so that you can really get the impact that you want while still experiencing the screen without any light on it. Okay, so now what I wanna do is move on to the general aesthetics of the room. And maybe you can share with people, you know, what led you to think about this kind of look in this room? So as I was doing my research, as we talked about, I wanted the audio, the visual, but I really wanted that emotional punch when someone walked into kind of get transported to a new era or a different place. So I looked through your videos on audio advice and I saw a theater that you guys had done a couple of years ago and you had spectacular unique lighting and that's what led me to kind of approach you guys and think about these concepts. Yeah, so what's interesting, this look that you see is actually a signature audio advice look. These are actually audio advice panels, so we produce these acoustic panels. You will notice in this room that you don't see any speakers. Everything is hidden from floor to ceiling panels and this look that we like to do in a lot of theaters like this starts with LED lights that are in a diffuser and we're using the same diffuser here linearly up and down that we're using in the display case. So you don't see any of the individual LEDs. So you've got high LEDs in these diffusers and then between them is a mixture of acoustic panels that are hiding the speakers in the room and they've got a mixture of absorptive and diffusive all around the room to have the right acoustics in the room. What is really cool about this is we have the ability to dim these the same as everything else. So when we're sitting in here, it's this beautiful look, and then obviously you can dim it down when you're ready for everything else. But if you look towards the front of this room, one of the cool looks you wanted was we matched the blue LEDs under the chairs with using another diffuser at the top and bottom of this screen. So Kamal, one of the things you were fanatical about in the original vision of this theater was to nail the video. Tell, tell everyone you, what you were thinking. I've been to many other home theaters uh, with my friends and family. And what I noticed in other theaters is depending on the content of movie you're watching, you get these big black bars on top or big black bars on the side. And that always took me out of the movie going experience. So I wanted a solution that had great video, great audio, but kept that seamless transition of what the director intended when you watch the movie, and I knew that you guys could do it. Yeah, so once people start stating, I love movies, just like you did, and I want it to be exactly as it was intended, we start with the source. So in this theater, we have a kaleidoscape, and as you know, for the viewers out here, kaleidoscape is the best movie server system in the world, bar none. It's bit perfect video and audio. So you are experiencing it as good as can possibly be done. So we download the movies there. 
or rent them from there in the highest resolution possible. Then it goes through a Mad VR. And a Mad VR is a video processor that has just taken the world by storm right now because it handles all the tone mapping and the colors. It handles the aspect ratio, subtitle management, everything you could possibly imagine to make sure it has the best picture possible to send to the projector. And then we're using the Sony 6000 projector, which puts 2,500 lumens on the screen. And what was interesting about your point about black bars. Most of the time when people come to us and say, I love movies, we're talking about doing a widescreen uh, experience. However, you watch movies that are not just in widescreen, you're watching movies that were 185 or 16 by nine. And so because we use the full width from side to side here, we actually had room to go up to do a 16 by nine, which meant we could do a horizontal masking screen. So this particular screen is an acoustically transparent screen from Seymour, and it allows us to put the speakers directly behind it so the sound is coming straight out from the screen, but also between the Mad VR and the masking, every single movie is detected what aspect ratio it is, and it can adjust the masking so that you never have black bars and you're using all the light pixels possible to get the best picture possible for every single movie. Scott, as you know, one of the things that we talked about with Killer Audio was I wanted it to sound great, but I also wanted it to look great. I wanted clean lines all around the theater, and I didn't want loose wires, and I didn't want big, gigantic speakers that were visible to the viewer. Yeah, and I think um, one of the things we first focused on was, you know, how do we find the right equipment and the right pieces but how do we hide them in this room that achieves your goal? So this room actually uses uh, Paradigm speakers, and Paradigm is matched with the electronics, which are from Anthem. This is a North American company. The speaker company in Anthem, which makes the electronics, are actually sister companies. And so we brought all of their products together, and what they're known for is delivering exactly what the sound should be. You know, some people are like, I've got these great like horn, really loud speakers or huge subwoofers. Now these guys are all about replicating the exact intent of the engineers. We've got the three left, center, and right speakers in the front behind the acoustically transparent screen. So everything's coming straight from the screen as we discussed. Then we've got side speakers and rear speakers that are hidden in the audio advice acoustic panels. And so we've got the panels cut out with the speakers so that they're playing straight through. We've got two Paradigm Defiant subs up in the front. You can see that we've got acoustically transparent fabric in the cabinet. Those two subs give us incredible bass for this room. And then we have four Atmos speakers. And the concept when you put all this together is that we could give you the full Atmos immersive experience even better than anything you could get in a professional theater today. What makes all the magic of those Paradigm speakers come alive is we're using an Anthem 1140 receiver. That receiver not only has great amplification and great DACs in it that convert all of the audio, but what makes it so magical is the Anthem room correction. And I think one of the things that Audio Advice has become an expert in, you know, when we deliver a theater, no matter where it is in the United States, we make sure that the room is calibrated using art, which is Anthem room correction. And it goes and looks at the room and all of the different peaks and valleys in the room and the frequencies and adjusts. And as you've seen, the sound is just amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Scott, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was how amazing these chairs are. So when I thought about what I wanted to sit in in a theater, you know, you find all kinds of stuff online. Fortunately, when I came into the Audio Advice showroom, you guys had these chairs in the showroom. I sat down, and the first thought that went into my head was, wow, this feels like the Bentley of theater seating. Super comfortable, super plush. I love that it has so many features. It's got built-in LED lighting, adjustable headrest. I can recline all the way back. It's got a built-in dining tray, and it's even got a USB port because, you know, we can never go anywhere without our cell phones, right? That's right. We sold lots of people's chairs for a long time, and we ultimately concluded we wanted to make the ultimate home theater chair because we were delivering theaters all across the country, and people were looking for you know, a little bit better comfort. They wanted dual motors so that the headrest was separate from the legs. They wanted a higher premium tray table. And so you know, we eventually produced our own chair that now is obviously our number one selling chair in the entire nation. And 
Um, seems like you've been pretty happy with it. I've been extremely happy, so much so I've fallen asleep on this chair. So let's transition from that to talk about control. Because one of the big things that happens in a theater, if it's not done right, you have like five different remotes and people are trying to figure out how do I turn the projector on and the receiver and everything else. You know, what's been your experience? We have this as a control four system that's an automated system that has a simple remote. Just tell everyone what it's been like. Yeah, and I would say my experience in one word has been simple. It's funny that you describe the multiple remotes. I remember growing up, you know, we'd have one remote for the TV, one for the VHS, one for the light, and you'd have six remotes. Inevitably, two or three would go missing, and you'd be scrambling to find stuff. The beauty of all of this, Scott, as you know, is literally singular button presses get me exactly what I need. I don't have to go get up. I don't have to fiddle with the lighting control. I don't have to get up and hit Blu-ray or Apple TV or Kaleidoscape. Everything is automated, everything's simple, and everything makes it easier for me to get to the movie that I want and watch it under the right circumstances. Okay, so one of the cool things about you is you've become known as the poster king. Why don't you just tell everyone, you know, how'd you get that name and what's the background there? Absolutely, Scott. Um, as we talked about before, movies became an emotional experience for me. Growing up, I remember going with my dad to the theater. We'd go in, get our popcorn, get our Coca-Cola. But the thing that captured my attention the most was seeing these really big movie posters. You see what's coming, and it builds up your hype and builds up your want to go out to the movies. So when I got into collecting... I thought to myself, what better way to be a part of the movie making experience than to have the handwritten signature of someone who made it. So the directors, the actors, the uh, production effects, it all comes together beautifully on a poster. So what I realized, Scott, was in the autographing world, there wasn't really a resource for full size movie posters. A lot of people would get little photos signed or scripts, but not anything geared to my particular interest. So as people say, if you don't find something, you create it. So I created a group on Facebook, and like you said, it's the largest resource for autograph movie posters. It's called AMP, A-M-P, Autograph Movie Posters. Started from a group of one of one, which is me, and now up to about 3,700 members. And you know, we talk about everything, how to get posters signed, where to get them signed. We've got signing companies that are in the group. We've got celebrities in there. We've got production assistance. It's just a really great community for people to explore this hobby and the interest. What I want to do is take the viewers to see a few of these killer posters that you've got. You good with that? Absolutely. All right, let's go show them. All right. I've had the ability to come to your facility to see where you've got lots of these stored, what you've done, but you store them in a very unique way that might be really interesting for viewers to understand. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. So as you guys can see, uh, they're stored in this plastic-like material. It's called Mylar, and it's totally chemically inert, certified by the Library of Congress. So the reason I go through all of those links is, as you can imagine, paper and ink, they're both degradable. So if you display these posters out in bright sunlight or bright lights, the ink can start to fade. And so this Mylar protects the posters that are stored in the dark and then you've got this essentially fully sealed from pests and other things. So it keeps these works of art as durable works of art. So I'm gonna start off with this one. This one is near and dear to me because the thing, as a lot of people know, is one of the highest rated horror films of all time. But I got to personally meet Kurt Russell um, when he signed this. And I remember when I met Kurt and he asked me what I did, I said, Kurt, I'm a doctor. And he looked at me and he said, thank you for saving lives. And I look back at Kurt and I said, well, Kurt, thank you. It's a privilege. Even though I get to save lives, I said, your art and the things that you do makes our lives better. And I just saw the biggest smile on his face that I had seen that night. So it was very personal to me to get this signed by him and in front of him. Rocky IV. So I was born in 1982. This is one of the first movies I have ever seen. And I probably wore the VHS tape out, <laughs> watching it with my dad and my sister. I had the opportunity to ask Mr. Stallone to kind of write something, like, you know, my favorite quote from the movie or anything. And I thought about, what would you ask him, right? And I thought about the scene in Rocky IV where he has to fight the Russian, and his wife has basically told him, you can't win, which is demoralizing. 
but he finds that will within himself, and there's a song called Hearts on Fire. Yes, I know it super well. Right? It's, yep. it's a great workout song. So it's about the passion that's inside, and it allowed him to do things that no one thought were possible. So he wrote Hearts on Fire. Okay, final one you wanted to show us. Final one. So there was a little movie called Point Break that I saw in the summer of 1991. Most people identify with the good guy, and Keanu was great, but there was something about Patrick Swayze's charisma, his magnetism, his outlook, where I identified with the bad guy. And so the reason that this means so much to me is we all know Patrick Swayze died prematurely of pancreatic cancer. Uh, finding a poster that he signed that was authentic is extremely rare. Well, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this dream of yours. You have built something amazing listening to your story over the past year and being able to be a part of building this museum slash theater and just getting to know you personally. The way you treated our team and everyone else involved, we were blessed to work with an incredible builder on this that you and we put a lot of pressure on and, and the builder did a superb job, but just... Thank you. It has been so much fun getting to know you and become friends with you and work with you. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Scott. And if I can, as your consumer, I just want to say that you guys were professional, you had ethics, and you took an idea that I had in my brain, which my wife thought was crazy, but now thinks is amazing when our friends come over. You took that idea and you made it reality. And every part of your organization, from you to the people that did the work on our house, you were fantastic to work with. I would do it again. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed this. Getting a chance to see Kamal's life and how he grew up and how all this came together was something I couldn't wait to do for the audience. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this. There's also lots of great content at audioadvice.com where they can try the home theater tool that you used, see inspiration gallery, everything, you know, home theater and smart home and audio related. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.